All right, well, I guess we'll get started for the evening. We'd like to welcome each of you out to the uh, fourth and final GTAC meeting of the 2017-18 school year. Uh, we have a good turnout here in-house, and hopefully we have just as good of a turnout at all of our remote locations this evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Davila. I'm the president of the GT Advisory Council. Joining me this evening uh, is Mr. Danny Lopez, our vice president. We have Ms. Uh, Lizzie Aguilar-Cruz, uh, who is our secretary slash uh, tech specialist there. We also have from the uh, Northside District Office for GT and Advanced Academics, Ms. Courtney Mayer, the uh, director and Ms. Kim Stewart, the instructional specialist. Okay, well, uh, we will get right to our agenda. Um, if each of you can uh, look at that, we usually like to start with our mission statement. At the very top, please read along. Uh, the mission the G of the GT at Richmond Advisory Council is to enhance the opportunities and experiences of students in Northside ISD by identifying and recommending improvements for the district's gifted and talented program by expanding public opinion and awareness through communications and by providing funds for grants and specialized GT projects. Does anybody have any questions about what we do here or any feedback before we continue? No, everybody's uh, been here a few times at least, right? <laughs> okay, so we have a lot to get to today on the agenda, so we'll get right into it. We are very pleased to welcome a couple of special guests who are going to be uh, making presentations regarding summer enrichment opportunities for our students. And as a testament that we do listen to the feedback of the parents and the educators and the students, and we always try to keep things fresh and uh, keep you guys motivated uh, to come back every meeting, um, we had a request or a few requests for uh, high school-related um, enrichment opportunities during the summer. Uh, oftentimes the summer enrichment opportunities are for younger children, K through eight, but we do have some uh, high school level presentations uh, tonight as well. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the director of the Office of Recruitment and Science Outreach, as well as the director for the Volker Biomedical Research Academy. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we're pleased to welcome from the UT Health Science Center right here in San Antonio, Dr. Irene Chapa. for those students is actually through a partnership that we have with St. Mary's University. We have a program which is our only four fee experience. Everything else that, I'll talk, that I've talked to you about and all these opportunities are all free of charge. It's part of our service and partnership with the community. But the BEAT program is a four fee program. It's a one week um, unique exploration um, workshop. And it closed today, in fact, unfortunately. Um, we have the Velker Biomedical Research Academy, which I'm quite proud of. We're starting our 10th year. And this is where high school students have the opportunity to do one-on-one um, -on -one mentored research that are that is honestly, I think, graduate level. We have, in fact, we were just told today that we have two of our high school students whose abstracts got accepted, and they will be traveling to um, present at a professional meeting out of state. And so we're going to fund their travel with their mentors and their postdocs, and so we're very excited about that. They have to be, um, this year, we um, are looking to have them start a little bit older, so they're going to be rising juniors when they apply, and we only take that up application once a year and we've just finished the interviews for those. Um, we also have off-campus visits where we are, you know, we enjoy going out to your schools, um, doing career days, doing community things, um, talking to specific classrooms, doing activities as you tell us that you want us to. We don't want to come in and tell you this is what we're going to do. If you're doing something on the skeletal system, it's your classroom. Maybe we can talk together about how we could enrich that experience with maybe some equipment that we have. So for example, I'm a cardio person. I love the heart, right? So I bought some portable EKG machines. Maybe you're you don't have that in your classroom. Maybe we can schedule to bring those out and do that as an enrichment um, opportunity. We're, you know, those are the kinds of things that we like to do when we come out, but all guided by you and what you all are doing in your classroom. Um, and uh, and then we there's a teacher program um, that's actually um, called the well the, the teacher enrichment initiatives, and you can go on our website and learn about them as well. They've done a lot of great things to translate um, scientific papers into um, lay um, language, um, and then also to have some activities that you might be able to utilize in your classroom. It's all free, and you just go on their website, and you can print out all of these things. And they've made them TEKS related, which is really great. Next, please. 
Um, this, we think that it's, it's a great thing that we're doing. We hope to continue to grow and evolve the more we are, in, are doing outreach. But these are some of the comments from some of the teachers and some of the students who have come to some of our programs. Um, and so, again, I would just welcome the opportunity for you to tell us what else we could be doing or for you to join us in what we already have on go ongoing. Next, please. Um, the thing that I would ask you, though, is to be mindful of time and have foresight. Um, that's the website for my office, and I will tell you that um, I was I was happy to talk to you all, but I was I was like, oh, I wish I had talked to them in January, because right now it's honestly too late to be planning for this summer. Um, our cohorts have all been selected, or they're very close to being selected, and I always tell students you need to start thinking about summer right after Christmas. So open your holiday gifts and then start planning about what you're going to do to utilize them and all the other time that you might have in the summer. So our website and our forms for all the summer programs actually come up in January. Usually the applications are due in February, March, and then we're selecting you know, by at this time of year. Um, also, if you want to come on campus for months like November, December, April, and May, when I think there's more availability to take students on field trips, we book three to four months in advance. So, yeah, um, so I, um, it always breaks my heart to tell people no, that's something I'm working on because I'm not a good no person. I always say yes, and then I overload everybody that I work with. But, um, but people will be calling, like I had four calls today, like wanting to come to, to campus next week, and we've been booked for months, you know, really, since January also. So if you want to come onto our campus, especially during what will be easier months for you all, contact us now for next fall or even for the spring. And we'll gladly put you on our calendar. And then again, um, if there's anything that you think we could be doing but we're not doing, please let me know. I mean that sincerely. Um, or if there's something that we are doing that you want to be a part of, please let me know as well. And we all know life is a balancing act, right? And so it's all about keeping calm and, and moving forward. And if you saw me rushing in here, I wasn't quite calm. So I try to take my own advice even when things like traffic get in the way. But uh, any questions from me? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, yes, um, absolutely. And so we recognize that it's important to build all the way up. Now, I'll say the most more thing, the things that I mostly work with are high school, college students, but I'm definitely reaching out to middle schools, and we are happy to go to elementary schools as well. So, but yes. To reiterate it, of course. Absolutely. So in case you didn't hear that one, that was a question about whether um, the teacher enrichment initiatives were for elementary student teachers as well. And the answer is yes. Anything else? No? All right. Well, I thank you. Um, <laughs> I am. Um, Again, thanks so much. Before you go, again, we have the Get to Know You Pack. It's my contact information. We've got pens for everyone. And um, because I know that kids like it and because I could have used this earlier, we have some fans for everybody. So y'all are welcome. So we have some goodies. I'll just leave this here for y'all as well. And um, again, thank you for letting me be a part of your conversation tonight. I'm going to apologize and run off because I actually have another engagement at 7. So, um, so thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Chapa. Once again, from the UT Health Science Center right here in San Antonio. Um, it's so important, like I said, that we don't uh, forget about our, our secondary level students when it comes to summer enrichment and, and outreach. And uh, that's why we had uh, invited Dr. Chapa, representing the UT Health Science Center, to come out and speak to us tonight. So we, we really appreciate the time that she took to be here tonight. Uh, was there any more questions, Lizzie, from the remote sites? Anything? Okay. Well, see, that, that's always good. Dr. Chopper, that means you answered all the questions ahead of time. He's, when, when I speak, there's all these hands that go up, so I have to go back. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Chopper. Well, we will, if there's no questions uh, regarding the UT Health Science Center presentation, we will move along to the next item in the agenda, which is our second special guest for the evening. Um, for those of you that have been in and around GT for long enough, you know how important uh, the arts are, uh, whether it be music, theater, uh, art, art, uh, like painting or what have you, uh, what the value of art education is to, to gifted and talented students and programs. So on that note, I would like to welcome the Chief Executive Officer of the Magic Theater, 
from right here in San Antonio, Mr. Frank Villani. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start by uh, talking about the summer camp um, and go on. Um, great presentation you just heard. Um, my presentation is going to be a little different, um, but I also want to you know, go from uh, background. Uh, I'm an attorney who used to represent professional athletes and entertainers. Um, and I went from that to coming to San Antonio when the, the San Antonio Symphony went on strike for the first time to represent, uh, which was in 1985. Um, I had no background in art at all. It was straight going from a legal point of view and what needed to happen. Um, since that period of time, I've stayed in uh, San Antonio. I was with the symphony. I ran the San Antonio Festival. Then I ran Art San Antonio. Then I became the cultural affairs administrator for the city of San Antonio when uh, a number of years ago, Roddy Stinson wrote an article that said the pigs are at the trough and said that all the arts were bleeding money and there was really no value to it. And um, so my position was created and my job was to oversee the growth of the arts, uh, funding things from the museums, performing arts companies. Um, then they uh, gave me, which was really exciting, La Vita, they gave me the Spanish Governor's Palace, they gave me Market Square, when they started the new um, situation down at the Mission, um, San Jose, for the World Heritage Center, we had that location. Um, and when I retired from the city uh, in 2014, um, I stayed retired for about three weeks. And um, I was asked, because the Magic Theater is downtown, and it's an old Beethoven Hall, which is from 1893. Um, it's now part of the Hemisphere Park development. And um, to sort of come and, and see if we could figure out a way to bridge what was becoming an ever-increasing gap. And the, and the gap was um, starting with, we have 150,000 children that come through Magic on an annual basis. But those, most of those schools were now being one problem with getting the buses to come. Two, the situation of being able to afford the, the school trips that were coming in. Um, and then we ended up with, with issues, the construction at H Park. People were afraid about what was going to happen when they came um, to Magic. So we worked diligently on doing that. And at the same time, uh, while I had been with the city, uh, there was a councilman by the name of uh, Ron Nuremberg who came up to me and said, you know, everything seems to be going on downtown and there, I don't really have anything really going on in my district, and I'm the most culturally diverse district in the city. Um, so you need to figure out something to do uh, from the city. And I was like, you know, councilman, speak to the city manager. That's not my job. Um, but when I took over Magic, I said, OK, we're going to do something. So we opened up a location in District 8. Uh, we have one right off of I-10 and De Zavala now, which is um, our North Magic Performing Arts Center. Um, we brought in um, the head of theater arts from the Corpus Christi um, School District, and she oversees that building. And now we run year-round classes, um, starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, going till 7 o'clock at night. Um, and everything that we do um, is process, not product-oriented. Um, the idea being, and, and this is, I think, most important for um, the students that you work at, we really want them not necessarily to take the script that they would see uh, if they were going like to the Woodlawn and they were going to be in Shrek. What we try and do is give them something, uh, an idea, and it can be an idea like um, Minecraft or Star Wars, and then come up and develop your own stories the group gets together, they develop a story, and then they put it together and we put the play on stage. We do the props and we do everything. Um, we have things like Seuss and Shell and things of that nature where we work with authors and really try and get them then to take something and devise their own story and, and put it on stage. So we've done that a lot with that on the north side of town. Um, and so we have 10 classrooms up there. And it's on an acre and three quarters of property. And so we have an outdoor area where people can perform. We have a little indoor stage. 
Um, so that's, that's an exciting situation that we have. And we do summer camp up there, plus we do summer camp down um, at Magic, which is at Beethoven Hall. The real difference between the two locations is that if a child goes to the um, performances down at Beethoven Hall, they actually get to do their final two weeks on stage, on the big stage with all of the props and all of the costumes. We have the entire set shop there. If they're at the north side location, we have the smaller stage. We still have sound and lights. Uh, but the costumes are limited and everything. Uh, but for a number of parents, they like the fact that that location has all its own parking. They can come in. They can drop the students off if they want, and then if they want to go and shop at La Cantera, if they want to eat, if they want to do something during the classes. Um, we also have a study room there. So if siblings come or if people arrive earlier, there are books, there's computers in there which they can use, there's a piano. Um, so we're really trying um, to become an asset um, across the board. Um, so what we do for the summer um, is we offer programs for children three and a half to 17. Um, so those are gonna be official um, camp type showcases which go for two weeks at a time. There are five sessions. If you have a three and a half to a four year old, they're only one week sessions. The three and a half to four year old would go through something called an imagination station. And that's really more talking about real truth versus drama truth. So what they'll do um, is put a piece of tape on a finger. And the child knows that that's tape on a finger in real truth. But in drama truth, it could be a mustache. It could be a flower. It could be something that they think of, whatever they want that tape to be on their finger. So we, we try and get them to talk about suspended reality. So they begin to think about it. And as we go to the older children, each of the classes, and they're broken down basically in two to three year increments, so five to seven, an eight to 11 year old. So we're trying to um, keep children in close to their same age groups. And we do musicals and we do non-musicals so that we work on two different set skills. So you could be in Hamilton and you're gonna be doing, if you're in Hamilton, you're really working on the music for Hamilton or in Wicked. We've done a Hamilton dance class, that type of thing. If you're in um, something like Star Wars, that's not gonna be a musical, it's really gonna be a play that you're gonna make and you're gonna, what they do is the first week, um, the teaching artist, and I should you know, talk about that, during camp, um, you have a teaching artist and an intern plus the head of the camp program. So each of the camps has the head of a program and then there's the director of the program. So all of the teaching artists are actors and teachers. So they have a teaching degree and they've been um, an actor also. So what we try and do is, is make that a situation so that they're really getting something that has an educational value along with um, something that is going to be uh, creative. One of the things I think that's uh, really a little different about us, and sometimes it's difficult to explain, is we're really not a pay for play. Um, we really want there to be something that the child is gonna get at the end of the two week period of time that um, they're gonna be able to, to take home. And a lot of the programs, um, that go on in the city, and I know this from, from having been at the city, so many camp programs are needed in this, in this city. We have so many kids that, that need it, but a lot of them are really, they don't necessarily want to end up with a finished product. At the end of two weeks, we're gonna have a finished product. The finished product may not be what you would have believed it was going to be, because again, it's process, not product oriented. So we, we want the children to come up with the ideas. Um, but on the, the same point to the, the past speaker, one of the things I wasn't gonna think about but might be great for the students that you have, we also have internship programs. If you have somebody that's interested potentially in theater, backstage, costume design, working with the actors, um, 
we have those things that go on so that during the summer they can actually work backstage. Um, we'll be doing Madagascar this summer. Um, we'll, we'll have just finished. Uh, we're opening Aladdin, but Aladdin will be running. Uh, and Aladdin, we're doing dual language. We're doing a number of, of dual language programs now. And um, in the summer, we're doing a uh, Moana and Miguel dual language program. So you're going to have something from the islands and something from um, Coco. And um, some of you may have come. We had Diana Lopez, um, the author of Coco, at our um, readers theater that we had and, and have and your students are reading um, things that you'd like to see uh, done. We sometimes can talk to the author. They will come in and we'll actually do a presentation on stage like we did with um, Diana Lopez. And it was actually interesting because um, she read Tomas and the Library Lady, which was the um, performance we were actually doing on stage. And I think most of you know, but if you don't, that was about Thomas Ibarra, who was uh, the son of a migrant worker who had been basically in Texas, and then they ended up going to Iowa. And the, um, he walked by a building one day, and he saw a carne, and he thought that it had something to do with meat. And it was the Carning Library, and he went in, and um, the library lady gave him a book, and it was the first book that he had, and he went through. And then uh, subsequently later, uh, Thomas Ibarra was the first Latino head of the University of California system. Um, and so it was a great story, and what was wonderful for us was the amount of generations that came. You had grandparents bring with their children and their grandchildren all coming to talk about that story. So she read that story in Reader's Theater, and then Councilman Pillay from District 8 read the cocoa parts that she wanted. So it was an interesting um, little thing that we did there. Um, but if you have kids that don't necessarily want to go to camp, but if you're doing programs uh, on your campuses in the summer or something like that, our teaching artists can come in and supplement anything that you're doing. Um, so we actually run... Um, a program with both SAISD and, I, and Northside uh, on the pre-K level. So we've been working, uh, bringing our theater for the very young in uh, from P, uh, for the pre-K performances, and we've been working on some workshops with teachers on, on training. Um, we do uh, three times a year. You, know, I, you will know this, I don't know, but um, we do teacher evenings where we have a forum uh, where you can come and talk about what we want to look at as far as plays for the following year. You sit down, meet with us, talk it through, see the play um, that we're doing currently on stage, and you get some sort of credit. Uh, that's a professional credit that um, goes to doing it. But it really helps us um, try and figure out what it is um, that we want to perform uh, on stage. Uh, you know, the... Tomas and the Library Lady was our first small dual language performance that we did. Um, Aladdin is going to be a much larger dual language performance. Um, and one of the things that we wanted was we were hoping um, to make an impact, uh, to continue to make an impact with the Latino community in town. So uh, we have Sebastian um, El, Curo de, El Charo de Oro, um, the mariachi, he's the lead. Um, so he got permission to get out of school, and we're working, and he's going to be doing all of the school shows. We have 43 school shows for Aladdin. He'll be doing that and singing. And so um, summer is um, all about, uh, we have a little over 1,000 th kids who come to camp. Um, we also have, both at the north side and at the south side, um, separate breakout rooms. So if you had a field trip, um, my daughter uh, used to be special ed at SAISD, and now she's with pre-K. So they'll do a lot of breakouts down there. And if you do a breakout, we can't handle at those locations more than 35 students at a time. But you would come in. It's all set up. The park is ready. We bring in whatever artists that you want to supplement what you're doing. If it's a teaching-related thing and you want props to go along with something, if you want to perform it to sort of help work something out, um, that's a possibility. 
So in a nutshell, that's what we're doing for the summer at uh, both locations. Again, we start, let me get this right. Um, we start on June 11th and we end on August 24th. And so we it will be running throughout the summer and um, there are brochures here um, that talk about all of the camp situations. If you have something in particular that you don't see or, and you wanna think about it, I'll leave you also um, Joe Janey's card. Um, Joe Janey is the head of the education department um, and she's really working to try and um, expand. Uh, when, we, when we started uh, three years ago, we had one artist in residency program. Um, now we have um, two artists that go into the uh, Bear County incarcerated youth and we're working with the incarcerated youth program. We're at the children's shelter, we're at Haven for Hope now. Um, and uh, we are doing, uh, I think it's the first program of its type um, in San Antonio and maybe in Texas, but we're doing a pilot program with SWISD we were taking 16 of their first grade classes that were at a level three. And as I understand the level three, it was, I guess a level one is you're slightly above, a level two is you're right at that maybe below, and level three is clearly below. 52% of the students were not reading at grade level. And what we're doing is we're doing a program with them where 16 of their classes are coming to all of our plays, getting the books, um, teachers reading the books, and we're having teaching artists go in before and after. Um, and then at the end of the year, they're going to do a reading evaluation to see if the classes have gotten closer and if they've decided that they're reading more because they've had that visual experience. Um, we believe it, but we were asked you know, to prove that uh, STEAM really has a real value to it, so we're, we're giving that a shot, and um, we just got a grant to continue it. So next year, we're going to do their first grade, and we're going to continue with the first graders that are going into second grade to see what happens. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Okay. Well, I have all of the brochures here that have the entire camp on it. Please do not hesitate. They're right there. And, and, and you can, they have, can have cards if they, yeah. Okay. I know Mr. Zelina, we're, we're getting a request from some of the, oh, okay. the outreach locations Oda, to, to make sure that we get uh, them electronic copies of, of the brochure. So okay, yes, yeah, so we already have a lot of people who are yeah, I'm wanting to make sure that nobody takes off with too many of those. We'll be happy to. to um, it's online, but we can shoot a copy of everything we have. Excellent. Mr. Valenti, I certainly appreciate that. Thank sir. You, sir. I'm going to wait just a few seconds to see if anybody from the remote locations have any questions. Um, but, no, we certainly appreciate uh, you joining us this evening. Um, the arts, as, as you know and as everyone here knows, is so important to the gifted and talented instruction and, and education uh, of our students. So we certainly appreciate you coming yeah, in and helping us to embrace I mean, that. You are our core, core audience. Well, and, and on, on a lighter note, Mr. Villani, he took a look at my hair earlier and he mentioned, what was it, Joseph in the Technicolor? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> the, uh, 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 to reprise my role in that yeah, from many it, years right. ago. So <laughs> it must be the hair, though. It's got to be the hair. But we certainly appreciate um, both of our distinguished presenters coming out, this, uh, coming out and joining us this afternoon, this evening, rather. Um, and speaking about the programs for our students that they offer. Um, as I had mentioned before the presentations began, we do listen to the feedback that we receive from our educators, our students, and our parents, uh, and we try to provide uh, resources that are beneficial and of interest to each of you. So um, please uh, show gratitude to our presenters by reaching out to them and hopefully participating in their programs. And we will keep these type of uh, events happening for hopefully uh, years to come. Lizzie, before Mr. Villani leaves, was there anything? Okay, just about the brochures. Okay, so we'll make, we'll make sure that the remote locations get uh, some copies of those brochures, electronic or otherwise. So uh, one thing next on the agenda uh, on, I believe it's item number three on the docket there, um, 
you will see reference to the first ever GTA EAC walkathon. Uh, hopefully, uh, each of you here know what that was or came out and joined us for that evening uh, out of Brandeis High School. Uh, I would, before I turn the mic over to uh, Kim and Courtney, I would like to take this moment to recognize, though, there was a, a committee formed by our treasurer who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight due to a family emergency, Rebecca Hughes, but she had uh, chaired a committee uh, which was comprised of um, the following teachers, and I'll read their names. And please, if I read your name and you're here, stand up so we can recognize you. But we have Miss uh, Melanie Alderick, Miss Diana Lopez Koppelman, Miss Julissa or Julissa Abing, Abing, is did my son, Abing. I, I don't want to butcher anybody's name, so I apologize. Uh, Mr. Lawrence Beebe, Miss Adeliza Gonzalez. Miss Deborah Dowell, Miss Laura Butterfield, Miss Robin Martinez, Miss Marty Ortiz, and Miss Biselva Ortega. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly also. So thank you so much. Ladies are here. Please uh, help me in recognizing them. We, uh, in the law enforcement profession, we'd say that they went above and beyond the call of duty. Um, I, I got to see firsthand on the day of the event all of the hard work uh, culminating uh, for that event that, that you guys put in that blood, sweat, and tears. Hopefully not too much blood, but uh, some of the blood, sweat, and tears. So we certainly appreciate Like I said, unfortunately, Rebecca wasn't able to be here tonight to show her gratitude as well, but I know uh, she very much appreciates the hard work that each of you put in. So thank you for that. But I will turn the mic over to Kim and Courtney that will talk about the results of that event. Thank you. And I'm going to let Courtney give you the stats, but it was a much more successful event than we anticipated for our first time. So Courtney, I think, has some numbers for you. And this is right. This is good right before the recognition of the grants because that's what the money can, will go to. Um, we made right around five thousand dollars for the night, and um, which is well beyond any fundraiser we have ever done. And we learned a lot. We'll make a few changes for next year, but we had we're guesstimating about seven hundred and fifty people attend. We were hoping for three hundred. And we uh, more than doubled that. So, um, so I think it was definitely a success. The T-shirts got sent out this week, and um, so hopefully your uh, families are getting them. Awesome. And just a word about the T-shirts. So it was a contest. Um, we had students from each campus, uh, elementary and middle campuses, uh, draw uh, something about GT and the impact GT has on them. And then uh, the campuses took it upon themselves to figure out a campus winner. But then the uh, winners from each campus were displayed at our elementary middle school teacher meeting, our transition meeting, and the teachers voted. And so the winner this year came from Rudder Middle School, and her design is very intricate. And uh, the shirts, as Courtney said, were disseminated this week, and it looks awesome to see it on a shirt. And so that, that, that is a tradition we will definitely continue. People are already talking about next year, so I guess... I guess we'll go round two next year because this was the most successful fundraiser we've had as, uh, as an organization. So, all right. We would love to show you a shirt, but we sent them all out. Yeah, we well, we don't yeah, shirts. yeah, we don't. Rebecca was going to bring one, but she, of course, could not come tonight. She has a family emergency. So, anyway, here you go, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim and Courtney. We appreciate that update there. And, and as I said, all that hard work um, came to fruition with this event as those, revol as those results demonstrated. Um, some of you may wonder, okay, well, we raised all this money in the walkathon. What, to, what did the funds go toward? And that leads to number four on the docket, which is the recognition of our Ignite grant recipients. As most of you should know by now, hopefully uh, you do know that we do award um, grants uh, with a cap of $500 a piece to deserving educators throughout the district. Uh, they must be GT specialists and um, be requesting funds for specialized GT projects. So um, if we can, uh, yes, we'll get, we're going to call up one by one uh, the recipients of this year's Ignite grants. And if you would, uh, if you don't mind, we don't want to put anybody on the spot, but we'll ask you to Maybe just give us a brief synopsis of what the funds are going to be used toward, and so everyone gets a, a good idea of what uh, the Ignite grants are all about. So we will start with Miss Sylvia Garizales from Myers Yay. Elementary School. And I want to point out Sylvia is a first-year 
GT teacher, so she jumped right in. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much for supporting you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank this committee for um, for funding this project. Um, it actually was born of from a workshop that I went to um, uh, at a STEM conference at the SCOBY Education Center on a Saturday. I went to a workshop on uh, coding with Ozobots. So I thought, what a great idea. If I could bring that to K through 5 at my school, that would be awesome. So I'm really excited about uh, starting that up. And thank you again. Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Our next Ignite Grant recipient is Marty Ortiz from Elrod Elementary. Congratulations. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone, to the GTAC, of course, committee, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this. Um, but mine is a swivel robot, and it is to help us improve in communication skills. Um, I had an ISM student who was a former fifth grade student come and visit my classroom and speak to my alphas. And I remember the one thing that just, just kind of made me realize that we need to work on our communication skills was that when she said, I have to give a 45 minute speech as my end product. All my students went, oh, I don't want to do ISM. And I was like, oh no, that's not what we want. So I started looking into the swivel robot um, and how we can improve. And actually the idea came from Fe Mrs. Feekoch, our um, tech coach. And so I thought, why not? Let me apply. So anyway, thank you so much. Our next recipient is Ms. Michelle Yebra. Yebra, am I saying that correct? Hopefully, from Ward Elementary School. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, hi, thank you. Um, my uh, the grant is going to actually go towards our classroom um, for flexible seating. We've really been focusing on kind of the talking about the environment and social emotional needs of students and so that was kind of my aim this year is to give these kids the environment that they really deserve so we're very excited for that so thank you thank you okay our next ignite grant recipient is julissa abing from cole elementary school Now, Cole, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's the newest elementary school in the district, or one of the newer ones. It's our ones second year. The yes. second year, okay. Yes. Congratulations Allison to you. Allison is our newest. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yes. That's right, okay. Thank you so much. So my grant was called Enrich and Grow with Osmo. And so it Osmo is, if you don't already know, it's a hands-on experience for the kids. So you use it with the iPad. And what I love about it is it has a creativity piece where the kids can draw on a drawing pad and then with the magic of Osmo there's like a big monster that grabs their drawing and brings it digital and to life and it so it moves and it really helps with the kids creativity but it also has math that you they it comes with like a pizza and very tactile for the kid, kiddos in our enrichment programs it has tangrams they have a genius kit it has uh, coding so it teaches computer coding Lots of fun stuff with it. And so we're building our makerspace area for our, like in the GT classroom. We have one in the library, but I'd like to continue to grow that since we are a new school. So that's what that is. Congratulations. Thank you. Our next recipient is Miss Mary Sedio from Northwest Crossing Yay. Elementary. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Hi, thank you guys so much. So at Northwest Crossing, our grant was for hands-on algebra and actually hands-on division as well. Um, it's a really cool uh, kit where the kids can actually get that number sense and physically manipulate the equations. And so they really have a better understanding of what those numbers and letters on the page really mean. Uh, there's a balance and they have to actually make the equation balance on either side physically 
as in, in addition to numerically uh, making it balance. And so the division kit is similar, but we can start at a younger age uh, to really build that true number sense in kids um, because as they go up higher in math. You get so many kids who as soon as you start talking about equations and uh, you put, start to put letters into the numbers and into the equations, it, they shut off and they just say, oh, math doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. I don't get the higher level math. So really, it will help build that foundation in, in, in strong math skills at a young age. So really excited about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Our next recipient is from Stevenson Middle School and is another, none other than Miss Anita Contreras. I'm, I'm getting tongue-tied here. Congratulations. Congratulations. Here's. Basically what we did at Stevenson, and this actually came about when I was planning for the summer school middle, program, middle school program that we do. Um, I was talking with Mitch McGovern at Jefferson, and we were coming up with different creative ways for the kids to do projects for the summer program, and she introduced me to the cricket machine that she has, and I said, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and so our kids actually have to do a year-long research project in middle school as well. And so we're trying to convince the students that you can't just have the knowledge up here. You have to be able to present the knowledge. And it has to look good. And because if it doesn't look good, nobody's going to come listen to you talk. And so it's a whole package deal. And so this is just a better way to help them present their projects better. Excellent. Can't wait to see you. Thanks Thanks so much. Congratulations. OK, well, our final uh, Ignite grant recipient for the 2017-18 school year is Ms. Michelle Bunn from Rawlinson Middle School. Woo! Congratulations to you. So this is my second year in GT, and I teach um, middle school at Rawlinson, and I'm doing ELA, and we have a 90-minute block. And I realized last year, in my first year, I was in a very small room, and it was compacted, and I have cute decorations and everything, but I wanted something different for my kids to be able to sit, so I did a little bit, um, I wrote a grant to do learning space, flexible seating kind of thing. Um, I moved from desks last year to getting tables in my room, and now I want to drop two tables to the floor so that I can do an area rug and um, pillows for them to sit on because a lot of my kids, we do, are moving around all the time. We don't sit at our desks or at our tables, and I want them to be comfortable. And our librarian just bought these really cool, I don't even know how to describe them, circle little bouncy seats, but they like they bounce when you sit, but they don't, they're not balls. So I want to get a couple of those. And then um, I'm getting, my kids are very active at middle school. You got to keep them going for the 90 minutes. So I want to get little stair stepper exercise machines for them to stand. I'm going to build, um, use the money to build um, like a longer desk that's a pretty high so that they can stand because some of them are way taller than me. So I'm using the money for that. Congratulations. That's awesome. And she's right. I've seen her kids. They're all over the place when I've been over there at her school. So I do want to ask all our grant winners if you'll just stay. We want a group picture before you leave tonight, okay? But I know Jeff has an exciting um, presentation, so we'll give it back Thank to you. Thank you so that. much. Well, congratulations once again to our Ignite grant recipients for uh, the 2017-18 school year. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, these funds are only made possible by your support and your participation in our fundraising events. We try to keep uh, our fundraising events uh, interesting and entertaining enough uh, for people to want to come out and attend because we don't want enough people ask for money all the time and are constantly reaching into your purse or pocket or handbag, or whatever. So we want to make it uh, more of a, a fellowship environment. So you know, you want to come out, bring your family, and help us raise those funds. Um, on that note, I began something uh, at the beginning of this school year, but it's, it's, it's been definitely a labor of love uh, over the past four years, um, which has uh, covered my involvement with the GTAC. Uh, as most of you know, uh, whom I've met and spoken to before, uh, I'm a graduate of Northside ISD schools and uh, a participant in the GT program myself. And now as a father of GT students, uh, you know, things have kind of come full circle. But um, one thing that was never available when I was a student, but uh, and still wasn't until now, was a scholarship that was dedicated to our GT students. Um, as I mentioned, it's been definitely a labor of love because uh, it hasn't been easy, and there has been, believe it or not, a lot of naysaying along the way um, to get this established and, and going. But uh, I think we, we finally have gotten it up and running. 
But at this time, I would like for the uh, officers uh, from the GTAC, which would be Danny and Lizzie, if you could come up here and join me at the front of the stage. And as I mentioned, our fourth officer, our treasurer, Rebecca, couldn't make it this evening. Okay, and uh, we would like to welcome our scholarship finalists. If you were notified that you were a scholarship finalist, can you come up here and, and join us, please? <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, this is Miss, Miss, Miss Hammer, right? Yes. And I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes. Okay, I was, you know, it looked easy enough, but I wanted to make sure. And she's a graduating senior from Stevens High School. And I guess we'll just drop the act. You were a finalist, but you're the only finalist, so you actually are Ignite Grant recipient, or Ignite Scholarship recipient for the 2017-18 school year. We, we, we had to keep it, we tried to keep it a secret by saying finalists, but... We're not going to do that. We're, this, we're not a, a, an Academy Award show. We're going to have a camera in other people's faces that don't get it. But so, you know, we're so glad you're, you and your mother were here. And uh, yeah, if you could stand up, ma'am, also um, to, to be recognized. This is her mom. Parents, parents are so important in this process. But um, I want to read a letter that I wrote to you uh, and that's signed by the officers in attendance here. But I wrote, Dear Ms. Hammer, as a distinguished member of the graduating class of 2018 and an active participant in the Northside ISD Gift and Talented Program, the GT Enrichment Advisory Council is pleased to recognize your hard work and dedication. In accordance with the guidelines set forth by this organization, we, the officers of the council, proudly award you the inaugural edition of the Ignite Scholarship. In doing so, we remind you of the definition of this award's namesake, Ignite, which is to give life or energy to someone or something. We are sincere in our hope that your involvement in the Gift and Talented program has ignited something within you which will, continue, which will continue to shine for years to come. As you continue upon this lifelong journey we call learning, we challenge you to ignite inspiration in others as you too have been inspired. So we sincerely congratulate you on this award. And we will give you this letter once. I'd, I'd like for our, our fourth officer to be able to sign that. And uh, we'll talk after the meeting about what will happen from here, you know, for you to receive your award. But I do have to ask this question. May I ask when you were born, like your day and month? January Jan 11th. Of 2000. 2000. Okay. Yes. And that, that speaks to my point. And just, uh, so this is going to get real corny here for a second, but please bear with me. Um, I graduated from, from Marshall High School uh, March 3rd, or March, May 30th of the year 2000. So you were about five months old at that time. Yeah. And this is a testament to how things come full circle. You know, 18 years later, uh, we have a, graduating, a graduate from the class of 2018 who's now receiving the first ever GT uh, scholarship. So we hope to continue this for years to come. And perhaps 18 years from now, we'll see Ms. Hammer right back here. Uh, with the microphone in her hand. <laughs> if, if, if you'd like to say anything, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. I just wanted to thank y'all so much for, you know, helping me reach my dreams and really further everything that the GT program and the ISM program has inspired me to do because I spent a lot of years in this program and there's been so many different things that I've been able to do through it and it's been the highlight of my years in school. So thank you. And, and it is my understanding uh, Ms. Hammer's intent is to attend UCLA, is that correct? Or that's... No, that, was, okay. that was one of my top schools, but okay. I, um, I've decided on Pepperdine University. Oh, Pe oh in Malibu, California. I know, I know the university. I almost went to go play baseball there. So yes, I know Pepperdine University. Well, it's a beautiful landscape over there, let me tell you. The, the beach alone will sell the school. Um, but great, Pepperdine, uh, the waves, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. The Pepperdine waves, all right. So great. Well, um, once again, the funds available for this scholarship uh, was made possible by participation in a high school level fundraising event that we had back in December. And so for those of you who participated in that event, we sincerely appreciate that on behalf of Ms. Hammer and all of us uh, on the uh, advisory council. We appreciate your participation and please continue to help us raise these much needed funds so we can continue giving out these grants and scholarships for years to come. So thank you so much. Uh, oh, oh yes, oh, yes, oh yes, and her teacher, uh, Mrs. Cisneros, joined us here this evening. I apologize, Mrs. I don't want to put you on the spot, but please come up here. <laughs> what a great photo! Yeah. So Mrs. has been incredible at facilitating Maya's dream to go to the school out of state. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And Maya, where were you?
Oh, did we? Uh, were we? Or yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Let's see here, too. Okay. Congratulations so much Thank again. Well, before we close out for the evening, let me just uh, make a call for any more questions or suggestions or comments. Uh, if no one has any for now, you can uh, look at the bottom of your agenda. I have an email address that uh, will, it, it comes to me directly. So if there's anything uh, that you have concerns or questions about, please let me know. Uh, even if it's over the summer, I still will check the email. So, uh, you know, we'll try to get those addressed or point you in the right direction. Um, in closing this evening, uh, that's one thing I forgot. I think at my age, for every additional task that I add on myself, I have to, like, forget about one. So uh, it's inevitable that I leave something behind somewhere. Um, but it was a letter that I had received in the mail just recently, and I was going to read an excerpt from, from that letter, but uh, I'm just going to have to ad-lib. But um, I received a letter in the mail, as I mentioned, from the state of Texas, uh, Austin, Texas, uh, with the official postmark and everything on it. So the first, and the, the first thing I was thinking was, oh, like, what did I do? What did I not <laughs> sign? You know, like, who did I, you know, whose toes did I step on or something? But um, it was a, a welcome letter from uh, Mr. Mike Morath, who's the Texas Commissioner of Education. And he personally invited me to be a part of the state-level advisory committee for gifted and talented instruction and education. So I'm very honored. I'm very honored to accept that responsibility, and, and it's something that I don't take lightly. But it's reassurance that not only are we doing the right thing, but that people are taking notice that we're doing the right thing, and on, on levels that I wouldn't have even anticipated. So uh, I'm excited to say our, uh, my first meeting with that advisory committee at the state level will be uh, later this month on the 25th of April. And we'll be meeting, uh, I believe it's four times a year officially. So um, please, once again, at that email address that I had uh, left, if you have any questions or concerns that we can address at the state level for legislative changes or what have you, um, feel free to let me know that as well. But I'm still going to be involved here. Don't worry about that, you know. But, uh, yeah, just to the state level. Sure. No, no. Um, so normally this time, this meeting, we are electing officers for the following year. And I just wanted to remind people or notify in case you didn't know, last year we um, voted to make our officers a two-year term. And so we are not holding elections tonight. Jeff is returning as our president. Danny Lopez is returning as our vice president. And Lizzie is returning as our secretary. And then Rebecca Hughes will be returning as our treasurer. Is that what she is? Treasurer? Okay, great. But anyway, I, in case people we're wondering because we've always we've always had elections at our final meeting and we are not doing that this year no so candidates here. <laughs> no no we're done okay, okay. <laughs> and we do congratulate you we are so oh, proud to no, have you oh no it's my pleasure no, no, my pleasure well thank you so much for that no as i said this is definitely a labor of love um, as a former student of the program and a parent of students um, I know firsthand the importance of this program and um, the great things that are produced from being involved in this program. So we want to keep that going. We want to keep uh, GT alive and, and on the radar of decision makers uh, wherever they may be. So if there's no further questions or concerns, we will let you adjourn early tonight. Um, yeah, we'll shoot about 15 minutes Can early. Remember, grant winners, if I could have you right up there. Yes, but thank you so much for coming out this evening and for those at the remote sites for joining us um, online. Thank you very much for coming out.